Grace to God. My beloved, I want to greet everyone that are connected with us online and the brethren are present here in the Church of Pompano with the peace of the Lord. We are stand up and are going to read the Bible, which is in Genesis. Genesis 32. Genesis 32. We're going to read verse 22 from verse 20 th Genesis 32 from verse 22 all the way to 31 I'm going to read the verses the even verses and the church may help doing the reading the odd verses verse 22 says the following and he arose the night and took his two wives his two female servants and his eleven sons and crossed over the ford of jacob he took them sent them over the brook and sent over what he had then Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the so socket of his hip, and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? He said, Jacob. And then, and he said, Your name shall not long, longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked, saying, Tell me your name, I pray. And he said, why is it that you ask about my name? And he blessed him there. So Jacob called that name the place Peniel, for I have said God, I seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. Now everyone together, just as he crossed over Peniel, the sun arose on on him, and he limped on his hip. You may sit in my bread. Let us hear a song. Uh, remain in fellowship with the Lord, meditating on the words of this song. Não sobe ameaças, não sobe o 
good it is to serve this wonderful God. Uh, brethren, I want to um, approach this uh, topic today, a night, uh, a night of salvation, the meeting of man with God. We know that there are many people that have had this experience of salvation here, but surely there are some people that have not had this wonderful meeting with the Lord. And we want to use this example here of the Old Testament, which is a, a struggle between a man with God, a battle between him. Give it very clear to us how man, how much man desires to have a meeting, a true meeting, a blessing, a wonderful blessing of having this closeness with God, which is the desire of every human, most especially the, of those that are away from God, that we call sinner. So I want to uh, um, approach this topic with the brethren about uh, Jacob. And Jake, his name means the one that supplanter, the ones that goes above every goes over everybody that does not respect anybody's limit and Jacob reminds us in his life and his uh, struggle for for blessing from his birth all the way to the whole story of his life his name uh, is that is his name is this name has the proper meaning. He, when he was born, he was holding on the heel of his uh, twin brother that was born first. If if they allowed a couple more minutes for them to be born, he would probably be born first. He wanted the blessing because in the old times, the firstborn was the one that had received the blessing from the father. And we know the biblical story. They were the descendants of Abraham children of Isaac. They were going to be heirs. The firstborn would be a heir of a nation that was going to be chosen by God. So Jacob, with his name, the supplanter, he reminds very much our lives, our sins, our, the way we behave, our lives in this world. 
without God, but we desire in our souls to f meet with our Savior. Why is that? Ever since the original sin, when man went uh, away from the Lord, he lost. Man lost that wonderful position of him having intimacy with God. God established a plan. We call it plan of salvation, project of salvation. And this project, my brethren, it's centered in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. A man seen that he uh, was set apart from God, and God established a project. And we make the first, that's where we see the first reference of the gospel from the seed of the woman that was going to be born, one that was going to crush the head of the serpent. What a wonderful promise. God was not caught by surprise. God knew that man could sin. He left on man's hands the choice, but man sinned, women, the woman sinned, and they went away from the presence of the Lord. But now God establishes a project. There will be one descendant of the woman that will bring men back to the fellowship with the Lord. The Bible shows that that person, my brethren, is no other person than the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no man, whatever, in the whole history of humanity, there was not and there will never be a man capable of, of put together the hands of God and uh, man's hand, uh, the hand of a holy God with the hands of a sinner man, and making this union only through a sacrifice, a perfect sacrifice, a, per a sacrifice of a just man. We're not uh, just men, we are sinners. The Bible says there is not a single just person. But the Lord Jesus as the just one, the God that came down from his glory, came to us, died, resurrected in his life. And he is the author of this great salvation. And what is in man's heart, this is the plan of salvation. The plan of salvation is focused on the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no other name that matters for us to be saved other than the name of the Lord Jesus. What a wonderful thing. But now there is a thirst in man's heart. Man went away from God. He lost the thing that was most wonderful most delicious thing that could exist, which was the fellowship with God, having contact with God. He had a conversation with God. He heard the voice of God. And sometimes we, we are in a service like this. How wonderful when we hear the voice of the Lord through a song being sang, through the message, through an action of the Lord, God touching our hearts, a reminder that God uh, gives us how good it is to hear the voice of God. Adam had this every day. He walked in the garden with God and he lost this. He spoke, God heard. It was a dialogue. How good it is when we have a conversation with God and he answers us. We ask him in the word and he brings us his living word revealed it looks like that was written for us at that moment. And what is this? Is the voice of God? Is the answer of God? Is the dialogue of God? Is the conversation of God with you and I? Amen. Lost this. But we have the means to go back to that state of fellowship with God. Even if it is not plain, uh, complete fellowship, but we have the premises, the we're going to taste, we're tasting what we're going to have in eternity, but we are having a taste of it here. But I was speaking of the thirst of man's soul, because he lost this, and there's nothing, my brethren, there's nothing that can replace the presence of God in man's heart. The riches, the pleasures of the world, the beauty, the colors of the world, the dreams that you f are able to fulfill. You see those people, they are able to achieve many things. Maybe maybe sometimes they are very young, as, uh, stars, famous people, um, sport players, people that amass a fortune very quickly, maybe singers. 
and they begin to enjoy life. They buy a car. A month later, they want a, another one better. Then they buy another one, but that is not, does not satisfy. So then they buy another one. Then they buy a motorboat. Then then they buy a plane. I never saw anybody picking a ship, but it's people's heart. They are trying to fulfill what was empty in their hearts, hollow, and nothing material can um, fill that hole. They buy a house, two houses, a borrow, an entire city, but that not satisfied men's heart. You know, my brethren, because only and only the presence of God can fill this emptiness of man's heart. And Jacob, although this text speaks of a, a fight for a spiritual blessing, his growth, but I want to apply this quickly to our own lives, to the lives of those that have not had an experience with God. So the first thing that we see here is that he got up that same night. My brethren, this world lives today. We have learned in the Sunday school in the seminars that we live on a time. How is this time called? A time called near. A time called near. Why near? The youth, the lessons just saying here, Maranatha. Jesus will come at any moment. The signs are all there. The crowds on the valley of the decision. We are leaving the night. Jacob and then Jock get, get, got up at that same night, at the moment of this world, at the moment of darkness. Family is destroyed. The sin is has no limit. There's no limit for men to sin. And sometimes we even have a, make a joke saying that if the man, if the population of Sodom and Gomorrah live today in the world that we're living in, they will be ashamed. They will blush. Because the sin of the man today, at that time, it was um, uh, manifest in the flesh. But today, besides manifesting the flesh, is and it's affecting men's mind with uh, all the drugs and uh, and how does it? What does it affect? It affects the families, the society, affects the countries, the governors, and it affects every one of us because we live a moment of the night is undeniable that the world is living uh, breathing their last breath because at any moment my beloved brethren the Lord Jesus will be coming to take his church and I believe that this place will be empty here blessed be the name of the Lord the darkness are out there the multiplication of sin Sometimes people there are affected by illnesses that have no cure. It has nothing to do with medicine. Sometimes there are uh, illnesses of the soul. And I, we studied this morning with the brethren, a mind that was affected by uh, illnesses. But the Lord wants to transform this in men's lives. And Jacob did something interesting, my brethren. He, he let it pass. Everything that he had, his family, uh, wife, children, his material goods, exactly at this moment of darkness, that man begins to give worth to the spiritual things. And we praise the name of the Lord because you are here tonight. You could have been in many other places trying to feel this, satisfy the thirst of your soul, but you entered here and God will satisfy the thirst of your soul because He can do this. But now man has this meeting. He, is, he stays alone. He is a moment of meditation. It's a moment in which you need to make an evaluation of your life. You need to place in the presence of the Lord your failures, your sins. Evaluate what is going to come if Jesus comes right now. Have you imagined? If Jesus comes now. No, no, Pastor. Wait a minute. Let him to wait a minute because I need to fix something up I need the forgiveness to the, to give I need to fix something in my house my brethren the Bible says that the moment of the night and the mom is a moment that we need to be vigilant and we need this man needs to be alone in order to 
for him to be able to evaluate his, his spiritual life. His spiritual life, spiritual life should not be in danger. Jacob was alone and he fought with him a man. My brethren, during the night, you can imagine, the whole night we can apply an interesting thing. See, the night is a difficult moment. He speaks of the moments of darkness and trial. And he fought the entire night. We can say that man with God, without God, he fights the whole night. The, his whole life, his whole life he fights with God. He wants to justify himself. He's saying, oh, no, Lord, it's not time for me to make a decision. I'm a good person. I'm a good citizen. I paid my bills. My brother, this is not enough. Man tried to justify himself with his good works, but none of it can bring him salvation. And this trial many times uh, goes on the whole night. I was having a conversation with a sister this morning in our meeting, in our seminar in Hollandale, and she said, Pastor, I was raised in a church and my parents took me to church from the beginning of the, the church. I, would, I went to Manaim and the church and saw all of it. It was youth. And I said, I don't want any, any, I don't want it anymore. And she went to the world. And after a while, she came back. The Lord has received her and gave her blessing to her life. But she complained about one thing that many complain. Oh, why didn't I come back sooner? Why did I waste all this time in the world? Why didn't I come back to the presence of the Lord? My brethren, the, the night is out there. You, you may be fighting with God, and trying to justify yourself, trying to overcome this battle. And God wants you to win, but He wants you to win in a different way. Our victory begins with uh, our confession and with our repentance and uh, was surrendering our lives to God. Look how interesting it was. When the night was over and the morning broke, the Lord asked him, he asked him, the Lord asked him, what is your name? What is your name? And the Lord may be asking you, what is your name? And you may say, my name is Jacob. Lord, I'm just like him. I want to uh, go run over everybody. I'm a supplanter, a deceiver. And you know what Jacob was saying, my brethren? What the Lord wants to hear from your heart tonight. I'm a sinner. I need a victory this night. In this life, you need a victory. And there, I understand that it was a confession of Jacob. He could have said, oh, I'm the son of Isaac. I'm grandson of Abraham. No, he said, oh, no, I'm this. I'm Jacob. And that's what God wants to hear from your heart. Your uh, fragility, your necessity, because you want to give a victory tonight. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And the Lord has done something that was wonderful, my brethren. He says, you're not going to be called Jacob anymore. He changed his name, he changed his identity, changed the life of that man. God will do this tonight. You change lives. But it's not uh, a partial reform. It's not a, a quick patch. God does not do a partial reform. The Bible says that we, when we confess our sin, when we accept Jesus our Savior, when we confess that He only through the name of Jesus we are saved, He is the, our only Savior, He does one thing. He gives us a new life. The Bible says, speaks of, of a new birth. There is a vision that the Lord has given here on uh, before the service. The Lord has shown that there was uh, a, a tomb that was open. A person was already dead. But during the service, this pers person had a new birth. This person was born uh, once again. And this tomb was closed because it was no longer necessary. You know, my brethren, why? Because man's already condemned by his sin. The wage of sin is death. But when he accepts Jesus, when Jesus entered into his heart, he is born again. There's a new life. What is your name? My name is Sinner, Lord. Oh, but you, you're not going to no longer be called Sinner. 
You are not going to be called Jacob anymore. You're going to be called Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah for this transformation. Because Israel, you know what Israel means? Prince with God. Now the Bible says this. The Lord bows down from heaven to see what is happening on earth. All the way from heaven. God is above heavens. In other words, our God is so powerful that He is above the heavens. He inclines to see what is on heavens and on earth. It's Psalm 113 says this. And He, he raised someone from the dust and he allow him to sit with the princes of his people so Israel is prince with God and that's what God did with us he took us away from the mud of sin we were worse than Jacob even even worse one one day we said Lord we're sinners we fought with our own efforts to re be able to reach salvation but we were not, not able Lord so now we ask Lord do your part Allow us to be born again. And that's what happened, my brethren. You're not going to be called Jacob anymore. But Israel. There was a uh, change in identity. A new life. A new birth. And the Bible says, Who is in Christ? Speak with me. Whoever is in Christ is a new creature. The things that are they're old have passed away. Everything has become new. This new birth, my, my beloved, is at your disposal tonight. God asked the name to Jacob and he answered, But man is curious. Once he has received his blessing, he is now has intimacy with God. He didn't lost completely the fellowship with God. God rescues this fellowship with him so then we can feel his presence. Then he asks, What is your name? He begins a dialogue with him, my brother. The, the dialogue is started in the presence, presence of the Lord. What a wonderful God. So when you have this experience of salvation, God reveals in all the moments of your life, in the moment of sadness, in the moment of joy, in the moment of joy, the victory, in the moment of anguish, and also in the moment of blessing, the Lord is presence, present in, in this dialogue. What is your name? And uh, God answered, what, why do you ask my name? Why do you ask about my name? Why do you ask about my name? And the Lord gives three manifestations that answer clearly what is the name of God in that episode. And what is the name of God for your life tonight? First thing that God did, He blessed Jacob. The name of God for you tonight, my brother, is the God who blesses. This is the God who is present here, the God of the blessing, the God that will um, bless you with His grace and salvation. I've seen God face to face. So the second name of God that we can say here, the second manifestation is the one that He reveals Himself to man. The one that reveals His face to man is not a hidden God an old a God has aged a man that is away from the Lord no, it's a God that reveals himself a God is present here he's a God that blesses but he walks amongst us, he's alive he's the one that reveals the face of God and the third thing he says the following I have seen the face of the Lord and my soul was saved he's a God, Savior he is here to save your soul my brethren, the day was, the day broke, the night is over, a new day was born in the life of Jacob. He was no longer Jacob, no longer he was a deceiver, he was now a prince with God. And maybe you enter here tonight, like you enter like Jacob, you will live like Israel. You live as a prince, you leave this place blessed, you will have seen the face of God. You will leave this place saved for the glory of the Lord. May God bless the church. May God bless our beloved visitors. I invite everyone to stand up. We're going to sing a song. 
and give room for the Holy Spirit to work in your heart. Close your eyes. Stay, remain alone with the Lord. What are your values? Let them be passed by. Stay alone with the Lord a little bit. Think about your own life. 
think about your soul if with your mouth you confess Jesus as the Lord in your heart you believe that God resurrected him from the dead you will be saved because with the heart you believe to justice with the mouth you make a confession for salvation the Lord Jesus is here he is he knows that you have been fighting the whole night your entire life but you can surrender yourself you can say Lord my name is sinner I want to give myself to you my whole life I want to give to you um, make a new day be born in my life uh, make a new man and woman be born to tonight I want to receive you as my Savior tonight allow a new day to be born a new birth may happen tonight I want to live in your presence to restore fellowship and have a conversation with you Lord Hallelujah. very softly Allow the Lord to move in your life. Surrender your life to the Lord. He will change everything. Hello, his Lord. Trust in the Lord.
Lord, receive the service. Receive this blessed souls in your presence. Operate, Lord. Do what we were not able to do ourselves. In your name we say the wonderful grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, and sweet consolation of the Holy Spirit be resting upon you now and forever. Amen. The church may be seated, my brethren. Before the assistance, I want to read two spiritual gifts the Lord uh, shown a woman that came here supported and without uh, the desire to leave. But during the service, the Lord bring, brought a lot of joy to her heart. And she began to have a great desire to leave in the presence of the Lord. And also there's a man with a heart that was squeezed and, and suffered a lot. He was very sad with the news that he received from a family member in Brazil. And the Lord brought happiness to his heart, saying, I'm taking care of your family. And I tell you, my, my son, give me your heart. Let's go to the assistants and to all that visit us. We thank you. Remain a little longer. We're going to give you assistance. We here uh, your, are at your disposal to pray for you. Remain seated for a little longer. And I say the peace of the Lord to everyone. If you need assistance, raise your hand and we are going to towards you.